Hello, everyone. Welcome to my presentation on using deep learning for ultra-fast identification of BDJ segments. This is a joint work between Mohamed Ruhlamin from Computer and Information Science Department of Fordham University and Thomas McCarthy from Applied Math and Statistics Department from Stonerburg University, um, New York, USA. Antibody repertoire or RIPS profiling of B cells typically requires computational analysis of antibody sequences that have undergone VDJ recommendation and somatic hypermutation. An essential step in RIPS bioinformatics is to determine the original V, D, and J segments and their boundaries within the sequence. Widely used techniques such as IMDT and IG Plus are computation intense, and newly proposed methods based on probability models even more so. Deep learning methods offer the possibility of separating the model training from the classification step, which is very fast. Furthermore, the training process can be performed beforehand, thus enabling the VDJ classification to be performed rapidly by the end user. Deep learning requires very large amounts of high quality data, but these are now becoming available as more RepSec datasets are published. We have developed a deep learning approach to enable ultra-fast processing of RepSec data. So here we're presenting a deep neural network architecture um, and trying to introduce the idea of application of deep learning for VDJ classification. Uh, deep learning techniques can be used to classify the IGHB sequence. Uh, so here in the picture you see on the left, there is a set of sequence data. In the middle, there, there is the deep neural network and on the right, the results for the classification. So the training phase involves adapting the weights so that the model will classify each sequence correctly. This phase is relatively intense computationally. Once, the trained, once this model is trained correctly, the neural network can perform classification very efficiently. So the data set for VDJ classification um, involves the training testing data set. Um, so here we're basically using 288,773 high quality UMI barcoded human IGHB sequences, each derived from a distinct clone or unique CDR3. Sequences were classified beforehand using IMGT or high bequest. So we already have a ground truth data set from IMGT and high bequest for this classification task. 80% of sequences used for training, while 20% for evaluation or, or test cases. Um, so the classify, so the task is to classify each sequence into one of the 63 human IGHB genes in IMGT. Um, so there are basically 63 categories in this classification task. So here we present the first network configurations for this classification task, which involves the feed forward network. So you see in the model here, we have this, uh, the, uh, the input sequences comes first, and then it goes through an embedding layer that goes through a few fully connected network layer, which goes through the softmax layer for classification test. So here we see the um, accuracy for training and test um, of this model in particular, and we show that the training set accuracy is 99.14%, where the test set accuracy is 99.96%. Now the interesting point here is the speed. So you see, once we finish training the model, the training network can process 100,000 sequences in nine seconds only. So this is a second network configurations, which involves the conversion neural network. Here you, you see the input sequence goes through the embedding layer that goes through um, and one deconventional layer, and then followed by a few fully connected neural, neural network layers. This goes through the softmax layer for classification task. And here is the, on the right, we see the training and test accuracy for this particular model. So the interesting thing is the training and test accuracy are almost similar and the test accuracy is a little bit higher than the training. So this happened because the test data is a smaller like 20% of the actual data that, that has been used for training. And, and definitely there, there is a cluster of data that has been trained very well, which became very common for the test set. So there are, um, so we achieved about 95% accuracy um, at the epoch 18. Uh, but overall, the training and test accuracy is, is basically um, not as good as the feed forward neural network. So the third network configurations here we, we see is, uh, in, is created using the recurrent neural network. And we see the input sequence goes through the embedding layer that goes through RNN using LSTM. That is followed by three fully connected neural network that goes through the softmax layer for classification task. On the right, we, we show you the model accuracy for the training and test accuracy. The interesting part is the training accuracy is 97.73%, while the test accuracy is 97.42%, which basically um, reflects what we expect to see from a neural network. So here we achieved 95% accuracy at the epoch number 15. So, um, so, so you see the training accuracy is very good. Um, um, and, and also the training time and, and the testing time is very good as well. Okay, now we, we represent um, uh, a neural network architecture, including the, the whole uh, system design for the identification of the CDR3 boundaries. Here you see on the left, we have these uh, recurrent neural network. We choose this because this is the best training and the test accuracy. And on the right, we show you the, the three training models that involves classification of the start of the CDR3, classification of the stop of the CDR3, and classification uh, of the CDR3 region in particular. So here we show that we basically um, divided the classification task into three different parts. 
like a defi uh, I mean identification of the start part, identification of the start part, and and uh, like you know uh, also working on the middle part um, to to identify the CDR3 boundaries. So here you see there we we basically deploy three particular models. So each of these models has the same neural network architecture that is shown on the left. So one one works on the start part, another one is, is works on the stop part, another one works on the middle part, and then afterwards we basically combine the, these three pairs, the the prediction equities of these three pairs to um to to basically um decide whether this can be a CDR3 boundaries or not. And then we filter out the lower scoring region of the CDR3. So here we present the model equities for the identification of the CDR3 boundaries. And you see that the start of CDR3 could be identified with 99% F1 score. The stop of CDR3 could be identified with 86% of F1 score. Whereas the inside CDR3, we could identify it with 96% of the F1 score. So this is a very good, very good accuracy in, in, in particular, okay? So uh, conclusion, so we say that neural networks can be trained and used for efficient design classification. Test set accuracy was high for all network configurations, but highest for recurrent network. No evidence for overfitting with conventional or recurrent neural networks were shown. Other first classification um, uh, were basically, um, you know, so we show that 100,000 sequences could be processed uh, per second. So the program for fast VGN identification it can be found in the URL shown on the screen. And uh, where we thank to NIH grants for funding this project. Thank you very much for your attention.